I'm putting it live now. Okay. The recording has started. There mm -hmm. are 15 persons. Wow. There at now. Let's hope. Uh, connection is okay. And. Uh, Let's see what. Um, OK. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, nice to meet you. I wish I could meet you in different circumstances. Uh, we were discussing this morning with uh, Rasichin and uh, we were thinking that this moment needs uh, meeting like this. We are in the same situation uh, in the different countries, but we are in a different part parts of the timeline. And uh, we decided to get people very quickly here. And uh, we are talking. We have not prepared not too good any presentations. But uh, I want to introduce you, uh, the, my colleagues that are here now. And uh, here is uh, Francisco from mm -hmm. Spain. Good afternoon from Spain, everyone. And uh, here is uh, Razicin. Oh, hi, everyone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thank you. And you are from uh, India? India. Yes. And let's hope I have uh, Francisco from Brazil. Uh, I think he will appear here too. And uh, Lucas from Poland. And let's make this more like, uh, uh, like a chat. And uh, you, you, you have uh, some material, uh, PowerPoint material. But uh, uh, I can tell you about situation here in Finland. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I think um, uh, quite lately, uh, at 16 day of this month, our prime minister announced that Finland closes schools, declares emergency of a coronavirus, and. Uh, Suddenly, everything was happening very quickly. Uh, um, I think uh, our school closed at Monday, and everybody, every teacher, started to plan the education, and uh, uh, and and whole week I was giving workshops to educators how to deal with this situation and our school is like a um, uh, lot of our students are uh, in different towns in different places we have 1500 students 120 educators and uh, uh, it makes a lot of uh, effort and people were uh, thinking it is worth and I think that uh, I've been following the news all around the globe uh, because I was go uh, I was thinking I'm going to E2 at Sydney. Uh, I was following what is happening happening in China. At first, I was very disappointed that uh, the event was cancelled, but then I realized that this is something that we really really must do, and. Um, I think that following Spain and Italy, what is happening there, we should really think, rethink our education. It's it's not something that uh, we must change a little. We must uh, really change the education so that it can be done safe. Uh, no uh, physic physical education in gyms or sports halls or anything like that even they are thinking about that i think uh, it should be done uh, in very very small groups 
and mostly at homes. And I think that I could give voice to Francisco and uh, you could tell what is your timeline and your ideas. Well, first of all, uh, greetings to all teachers attending to this to this chat from all over the world. Just uh, I, I'd like to start with a br quick briefing of the situation here in, in southern Europe. I am in the south of Spain where I live. Now today, this news are for today, uh, Spain is the third country with higher numbers of infected citizens and deaths. Today we have reached more than 1700 deaths, which is terrible. We have been in our houses for one week now and the Prime Minister has just announced a few minutes ago that this quarantine will last for at least uh, three more weeks. So it means that for one month, minimum one month, we will be confined in our houses. That's very important. That changes the whole approach to everything, not only to education, but to work and everything. But despite other considerations about the seriousness of this issue, we are teachers and as teachers, we are meant to do something. That's why when, when Pekka, Pekka contacted me this morning and invited me to participate, I, I, I loved the idea because I think that we have to add to many other initiatives all over the world today. Many people are trying to raise consciousness of the importance of this situation. And many of us are building community. We have been building community for many years now. Different companies, different strategies. I'm not going to mention anyone now because they are not so important. But in this community that we are building up together, the, the object of this is to help each other. That's that's why I think. So if um, Pekka wanted, you, you wanted to tell me to explain, for example, um, what, what we did when, when everything started just one week ago. For example, here in in Spain, we were told last uh, Thursday, March the 12th, I mean, that the school could be closing on Monday. So we established one day in which we could organize everything. And the most important thing is the plan. You know, that there is a plan that we have to follow strictly, which is first to inform parents, students and teachers and other workers in our schools and keep them informed of everything. So we have to establish channels to keep people informed of everything in these three important sections, you know, parents, students and teachers. The second part we did in our plan was to decide the tools we were going to use. Uh, my school is a K-12 school. I have children from three years old to 18 and many others in Spain are the same. So we have to decide which tools we were going to use. Of course, in my school we are using Microsoft Teams for three years now, but others are using Google Classroom, others are using other tools. There are many tools in the in the market nowadays. But the important thing is to decide just as one voice what we are going to do, how we're going to do it, and uh, to work all together with the same idea. And the third consideration for us was to set up a mindset for this special situation, which is which is most important of all as teachers is to keep our students safe and to keep ourselves safe and to try to reach all of them. Many students don't have access to the internet, for example, they don't have a computer. They have to share one computer for three or four people in the same house. So the, the, the important mindset here is that our students have to be safe. So this is the plan that we organize in our school and most of the school here in Spain did. You know, in these three level of uh, actions, informing parents, students, teachers, deciding tools 
and set up a, a mindset of the way we want to do things. I think it's a first approach. Anything you want to add, comment on? I, I think it is. it was a, a good, uh, good way to put it. And I, I think uh, we could hear uh, what is happening in, happening in India. OK, Pekka, thank you so much for inviting me and greeting to all of those who have joined this call. Uh, let me just uh, tell you the situation here in India right now. The, all the schools being closed right now. OK, and the examination because this is the period where the terms is ending, the schools being closing. The students are expected to give their exams, but due to this coronavirus effect, uh, exams been postponed and some states have declared that from grade one to eight there will not be any examination this year so it means that many students don't need to pass the exams right now i would like to share my presentation here to share what exactly happening in india nowadays. Becca, can you see my screen? Uh, yes, uh, a little moment. Uh, a little okay, moment. Now. A little moment. OK, it's going. It's now live. OK, good. So while I'm just switching from slide to slide, let me know whether it is. OK. So we are now discussing uh, a plan that how we are preparing for the coronavirus. So as far as teaching and learning process is concerned, the traditional way of teaching is face to face teaching, right? So students and teachers coming together in the classrooms and they were having the interactions. That's how the face to face teaching goes on. And some part of blended learning is like partially it, you may call it as a partially face to face and partially blended. And the third mode of learning is completely online learning, right? So what is the Corona effect is that it has transformed the blended and face-to-face uh, -face learning and force us to adopt the third option of online teaching or you may call it as a technology enhanced teaching. So most of the teachers here in India or maybe across the world might not be aware of this or might not be uh, well prepared for online teaching. So this is a this is a great opportunity for all of us to go for this uh, online teaching and try to dive deep and what are the new methodologies could be used while teaching online so the teachers are using some tech tools for the purpose of teaching some of them are using those uh, tech tools for the assessment and uh, for the professional developments right and uh, while we are using the online tools, so there are some of the tools like Teams, Skype, Flipgrid, Vecklet, social media platforms like WhatsApp, and the Max of Forms, or maybe the Google Forms, any form uh, the teachers are using. So these are some of the tools you might be or may, may be aware of how to use it. I'm not explaining how to use these tools here. I'm just giving you the idea what are the different tools you can use while uh, you know teaching online and this is the situation in india right now 1.5 million schools 260 million students and uh, 5.8 million teachers are here an entire scenario or the entire number has to shift to the online teaching and the teachers are not well prepared. Even online classes are not that much well prepared. Teachers are not being trained how they can deliver the their online lectures using the tools that I have mentioned. So 
this is the this is the uh, what you can say the obstacle restriction for the teachers because they are mostly relying on the traditional way of teaching face to face teaching so considering the plan of action uh, I, I would like to divide that plan of action in a, in a two phase short term phase and long term phase short term phase it's like for the two or three weeks or maybe the one week uh, one month or the two months and for the long term plan we should look for the entire year how we can shift from uh, you know traditional way of teaching to the completely online teaching so long term plan comes to play their role at that position so considering short term plan we have to go for the borderless classroom using some of the tools that, that I mentioned earlier, Skype or maybe the Teams or maybe other video calling apps like this. Another thing that I would like to mention here is that collaboration, foster the collaboration in between the teachers. For example, if we are using the same syllabus, going for the same syllabus, I have seen that many teachers right now doing the online classes just for their class, just for the students that they teach. So right now we have to think on a broader line. Don't think that you are teaching to the only limited number of students while having the online classes. OK, so you can think of like teaching everyone across the world. The borderless classes or the online classes have that uh, access that everyone can go for it. And another thing is that the remote learning webinars. So Microsoft has right now running those remote learning webinars. You can try those. Things to remember while having those online uh, online classes. Don't go for the isolated teaching. I will explain it in uh, in a later uh, how the isolated teaching is going right now. Connect with the fellow teachers in your city or may with the same board or the same curriculum or maybe in your state. Connect with them, collaborate with them and try to make the lesson plan well curated and then go for it. Invite the expert teachers uh, over the Skype or maybe the teams and take a help of them and then make your learnings more and better and better. And more focus on skill development rather than on the curriculum. So this is what we should look for while uh, doing the online classes. Uh, uh, I think uh, this what you say that uh, focus on skills, not curriculum is yeah. not uh, is that uh, we are living time that is really different. Uh, people are focusing on exams. People are focusing uh, uh, working in inside the classroom. Right. I think I think that uh, people should really rethink about the education. And I was thinking that uh, at this moment, uh, I would uh, like to. Sorry, sorry to uh, disturb your presentation, but Francisco, I'm putting you in in the live. Uh, 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 yes. What yeah. you have in, in, in mind uh, about uh, sh should be worried about uh, grades or something like that at, at this moment or uh, no. do we f do no, no. do we feel uh, every rubric? That's one of the th there are several risks that we have to to face and fight. First, the excess of tools and resources. Nowadays, many, many, many teachers and groups of teachers and organizations and school groups, etc., are offering resources. The media are full of possible activities. I have, we, we have to be careful with this. You know, all activities are not good necessarily. All um, apps or programs or activities that we offer our students may not be GPTR compliant, for example, you know, all the European regulations about this, as, as we too are settled in, are based in Europe. So it's important to stop the excess of tools and resources to our students. Second risk, we have to forget instruction. Education has changed. 
education in person to work face by face with the students at school has nothing to do with remote learning. Remote learning happens differently, uses different tools. It is a different approach. It is not a matter of instruction necessarily. It is not information that is going, that is being passed into students. And I am free because I have given them all I want them to know. No, that's, that's not. And of course, the third risk is grading, what you have commented. It is Sometimes it happens in my in my own school. Many teachers at the beginning. Oh, I, I have uh, scheduled some exams for next week. I have that prepare what is going to happen. This is not important now. What is really important is that the way we approach education is going to change first, as uh, Ranshi Hid was saying in um, in a short term, but we don't know how how long it will take us. So these, uh, these risks are very important and they have to be faced in common among teachers. We need that our school administrations have to give us clear instructions about this. We have to, to know which tools we are going to use. These tools must be known by our students. Don't offer them new things that they are not going to be acquainted with just uh, in a few minutes. It's not the way things have to, we have to do. Our our regular curriculum has changed since the very moment it was designed for an in-person activity. Now it is remote, and of course, considering all of them have access to this remote learning. In some schools like, like mine, 95% of my students are able to connect. But my concerns and my thoughts are with these 5% who are not able to connect. And also parents. There is, there is, we, we have to have into consideration that this remote learning has been imposed. It is not something voluntary, no? So, Parents have a say, they have to say something. Parents have to be in their houses with two, three children, with just one computer probably, and perhaps the father or the mother has been told to stay home and do remote work, remote work, if, if they can, of course, not all of them can. So I think that the approach to this remote learning must be totally different to what we have been doing. Fortunately, all these tools that we have seen in uh, the previous presentation are there. And most, um, there are many other which are very good for that. But what we have to do is to use a tool at, as what it is, just a tool. You know, it, it, I have to use it to keep in touch with my students. This week I have done I don't know how many calls with my students directly using Microsoft Teams, you know, and part of my connections with them was not to teach my subjects, but to teach them how to use the tool to guide them through the processes. You know, click here, do you see what happens? Now this one, I think that all this training is giving them the best opportunity ever. This is much more important than regular subjects or grading or what's going to happen at the end of the term or if they are going to have to sit up for exams. I think that this is not so important. That's my opinion. Humbly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I, I, uh, uh, sorry I, I interrupted uh, uh, Rajin Chin, but uh, I have to share that same same idea that what people are doing at this moment is the learning experience of the century. Yes. And I, I, I think that uh, uh, we need to learn compassion and uh, do, uh, to contact people uh, in really different ways. And I, I think that um, now when we uh, 
just just suddenly put up this uh, webinar. It's a good example how we can really cross the borders. Even uh, they are say they are saying that don't travel, uh, uh, don't uh, uh, collaborate with foreigners. I think it's a good possibility, and uh, I, I loved your uh, when you were saying that uh, uh, we must not look the curriculum but the skills, and uh, it, That's it. It, it really surprises me uh, uh, when you said that. It's really like um, uh, in families, they are very limited about the technology, and we mm -hmm. must re rethink uh, how much we are giving them tasks to do with computer, because uh, they are all wanting to collaborate uh, outside the world. They are wanting to maybe contact grandmas and they are working and they mm -hmm. are studying and uh, it's it's very limited, but it's very important to to contact with each other. And I think that um, uh, this is something we have been doing. I, I have been doing uh, last week. I have been telling people that be merciful for yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, don't try to do everything. Don't yeah. try to do everything right now. Uh, and understand everybody is worried. And uh, uh, little by little, let's find out the solutions. And uh, please ask uh, opinion from the students, from the parents. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think uh, <clears throat> uh, that's how we can uh, get through this. And uh, back to back to India and Rasinchin. Uh, sorry, interrupting you. Uh, uh, I was thinking that because you are really facing this thing now. Uh, what kind of idea do you have uh, in India? Uh, how long uh, you are going to be? in isolation. Uh, to be very frank with you all, we don't know, even I can't answer how long we we will live in this uh, quarantine or maybe the isolation period. It had just started. Right now we are in a phase two and we are, we are heading towards stage three. So that would be very really pandemic and we don't know what the results might be right now. Spain or maybe the Italy or maybe the China. India having the big population, big populated country. And uh, we are afraid of that, that if we enter the very close to the stage three and the number of people, you know, we may we may lose them. So we need to protect ourselves. We are fo more focusing on that. Uh, on this note, Pekka, I will just resume my presentation and quickly uh, share some valuable yes. inputs. OK. OK. Uh, Can you see my screen? I see. Uh, mm, it's live. Yeah, so I'm more focusing right now on some of the tips like do's and don'ts while having that type of uh, online teaching or with the remote learning. I, I would like to recommend you all not to go for the lecture method while having that online teaching. Engage learners maybe with the games or maybe the, you know, very tricky games. Some of the tools like Kahoot or other tools you can use though. Try to spark the curiosity of the learners. It, it's very difficult to engage the learners while having that virtual interaction. So make sure that. And don't forget nature, nature is the source of learning. Your nature is a source of learning. And how you can use that nature in the in your virtual classroom you have to uh, take it in on a positive note how we can incorporate that in in our 
online teaching or maybe the remote learning. Uh, maybe you can go for very small, small type of a project space. It's my opinion. So this, these are the two examples. What sort of a collaboration is happening in India? You can now see in you know left side of the picture is that Miss Mrs. Chandni Agarwal, ma'am, she is doing some online sessions using her laptop. Okay. And on the, on the right side, you can now see the a teacher in a classroom using the blackboard, and he's just using the video camera and delivering his lectures. So my point of concern is that both the teachers could collaborate with each other and then go for the teaching. Right now. Their teaching is limited within their classrooms only. So when you go for the online teaching, you don't need to restrict yourself for your classes only or your students only. You know, you have to make sure that the world is in your classroom. So go for it. Every student needs you. You are the best teacher. So why are you restricting yourself within your classroom? So if you think that you are the, doing the best job, so then go for the students, those who need you. For the online teaching, the key to success is that connect, collaborate, and grow together. We we have to go for that key. And don't forget, I told you before as well that the world is your classroom. The how the society is affected in India, currently these are the facts just a few seconds ago. More than 357 confirmed cases in India, and number is increasing day by day. And uh, two, 326 being hospitalized. It means 91% total out of the total cases being hospitalized. And uh, unfortunately, we lost the seven people. Seven dead cases are there, and 24 being recovered. From 2nd of February to the 22nd of March. So the graph indicates how you know it is growing and growing. So it's a big concern. My state Maharashtra is now leading more than 74 cases. And it's a big concern for our chief minister as well. There is a completely lockdown. So what will happen next next week or maybe the next month? The entire country will be locked. Today it was a lockdown day for entire country, and I think it will go go and go and go till the 31st of March. And we don't know whether it will be you know uh, going further or it will just stop there. Only the emergency services are now open. Well, government is uh, you know appealing the people to join the blood campus because we're blood donation camps because we need bloods there and uh, we don't want to to go very close to the stage three of the coronavirus so we are restricting ourselves within that stage two so let's hope for the best that we could recover it in a time Okay, uh, we have uh, Lucas Gierek. Hi, Lucas. Hi, uh, nice, to, nice to see you guys. <clears throat> and, uh, uh, you are in a, in a live now, and uh, we have known each other mm -hmm. a couple of years, and I think uh, all of us have seen each other at some point of uh, life at Singapore or Paris or uh, some other event and uh, it was really quick call for you for this uh, webinar and uh, uh, could you tell us what is happening in a, in a edu and with coronavirus in Poland what okay okay uh, hi guys that's for first for second thanks for invitation for today uh, you know, in Poland, uh, our school uh, are stopped working around one week and a half. Right? It was something like that at 
two Wednesdays ago, <laughs> uh, our prime minister told us that that we are um, our school will be uh, will be not working, uh, and the, the the first decision was to for two weeks, so to 25 of March, but um, at last. A Thursday, um, they they made some conference and they told us that we are going back, probably to school at uh, um, at Easter. Uh, so it'd be like uh, more two and a half weeks, uh, about uh, not free time for us because uh, they told us that we should move to the to, to the remote learning and um, and do it from our homes uh, for safety. Uh, but you know, it's like uh, hard times for each teachers in Poland. Uh, I think that because um, there's no man, not, not so many teachers who are um, I don't know YouTubers or who are um, Facebook or social media friendly. If you know what I mean, so so mm -hmm. uh, people don't have a, um, I don't know don't, don't, people are shy and. Uh, people want don't, don't want to do it uh, do do it to that kind of um, model of education, you know, because they don't use to it for that. Our government don't give us uh, some uh, tools before that because uh, they don't uh, think about something th that kind of situation that we have right now. And uh, I don't know. Two days after um, the previous decision, it was like a uh, um, huge hype on the social media. People uh, share um, famous, I don't know, the the, the, the most important uh, websites in, in Polish internet for mathematics, for uh, language teachers, for um, other teachers, I mean like a subject. And it was like uh, two days and after that they just uh, they just, you know, they just um, try to uh, try to do it uh, by own. So many of them uh, try to be a YouTuber and um, share own content uh, in internet. But you know, mostly of them are working remotely using, uh, for example, Microsoft Teams, like me and my colleagues from. From my school, um, our headmaster uh, Arthur takes uh, some trainings for uh, for other teachers. Uh, I'm working in the huge school. We have over 140 teachers, so so they have uh, separate trainings how to teach or how to work remotely with Microsoft Teams, and we do that. So uh, we just need to uh, connect with our um, students by email or by. Um, we have something like a uh, elect. Um, it's like a um, internet library, not library. It's not a good idea. When you have a um, the, the, the place that that uh, you go collect uh, uh, marks, uh, but we, we we do that in the internet. I don't I don't remember the, the name in English of that, but it's like a platform uh, where the students can uh, join by internet and and take some uh, check some 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 assignments or marks. So it's something like that. This is the the communication, uh, the way of the communication in Poland. One of the way. Lucas, I have a yeah. question. Uh, mm -hmm. I visited your school and there are a lot of workshops there, mm -hmm. and uh, people are learning by doing by different uh, machines or, or environments and stuff like that. Uh, I think the curriculum is changed now or what you can do. Uh, what kind of solutions you have for that? You know, uh, mostly the solution that the, in my opinion, the most important thing that we need to change or do is to move our uh, that kind of curriculum to VR, I mean like a virtual reality or augmented reality. That, 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 that's the idea, but uh, we we don't we don't uh, have that kind of uh, tools for that and uh, that kind of um, that kind of you know um, how to say in English. Uh, you know, it's not easy. OK, I, yes. I, 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 will, I will start again. It's not easy because we don't have uh, much manpower for that. 
skills uh, as a teachers to do something and uh, before that uh, any of our politicians or any of our uh, headmasters or teachers even um, don't think about it in that kind of way. Of course, we have some kind of tools like uh, we can do. Um, we have simulators for that. For example, if, if I uh, teach uh, CNC programming, it's no problem. I have the uh, plenty of them and I can just share my screen and do it. But learning by doing is right now uh, it's like a totally disaster because we can do that. But I think that the solution for that uh, it's to uh, to to uh, to use VR uh, and and uh, VR Google's Hololenses, but um, you know it's like a, it's it's like a, um, we are standing in the front of the many of the questions. For example, foundings for that. For example, uh, accessibility for that. You know, um, I don't. Maybe I can calculate on my one hand or, or two hand how many students have that kind of set in your in my home, in in own homes. So we you know it'd be like um, something like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I I think that uh, it's a possibility, but it's not a realistic possibility for masses. And I think that uh, I think it's the same with uh, uh, like those workshops. Uh, it's a possibility when uh, people have get used to this uh, disease. And I think that uh, we can explore them after after this epi episode. Uh, maybe some some persons are trying to uh, like pilot these things like we are doing together at the Dig with the Digi Lab, but it, it's it's not something that that is not possible now. I, I, <clears throat> I really think that uh, uh, in next couple months, we will meet at the virtual reality, like you and me. And but uh, maybe we sh can share those experiences with the videos or photos or stories or something like that. But uh, uh, but uh, how can you tell me how you are doing exams or are you uh, just postponing them? You know, right now they don't have a plan for exams. Uh, we are in Poland. I, I, I don't. Uh, I think that it's it's not a good to, to to say something like that. They are thinking more about uh, elections, uh, not exams, because um, we have a, a election for a, for a president of our country in May or something like that. But they they don't want to move elections. Um, because of the situation, it's like a polit political um, issue. But you know, uh, about the exams, uh, we have um, nearly, we have two exams. One is like uh, in the public schools, in the ground schools, uh, after um, it's like an eight level. And uh, the next exams will be technical exams and, 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 and prom exams, like uh, and the ending. I think that, uh, in my opinion, uh, you know uh, the, the the most uh, the most easy way to do that it's to move to the another date i think for example in in um, the exams for the university can be due in uh, in september it's okay they can finish the schools in june and they have exams uh, in september because in uh, November they have uh, starting the, the, the school year at the universities, so it'd be, it'd be easy. But uh, the technical exams, I think that, that they need to move also in the other dates after after this uh, whole event. But um, uh, getting back to your uh, to, to your first question or, or to the question about VR, you know, I think that the good way will be uh, in each of our schools to have, for example, plenty of the VR sets to share, uh, to rent. You know, if I, if for example, I can borrow from, from the school my VR set and uh, maybe the 30 of the students can came, borrow for a week or for a few days, um, some sets of VR and, and getting back back after after finish uh, the, the curriculum. It'd be a good way, but we don't have something like that. We have only just one VR set in our school. So it's like, a, think of my dreams. Yeah, uh, I think that uh, we have a uh, time for the wrap up, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, uh, thank you for uh, your for particip uh, participating this 
thing uh, at short, such short notice, uh, I realized that uh, even when uh, I tried to uh, mentor using this technology with, with other teachers, I've been trying to get uh, Francisco Tupi uh, for, from Brazil to this presentation and I failed. And uh, I, I think that uh, uh, all these programs, uh, softwares, uh, they are new for everyone for us. But uh, um, I think we just need to be humble and be in advocate, like uh, we are all learners in mm -hmm. this situation. And um, uh, uh, hopefully we will sail through this uh, whole situation and uh, as we have learned something. And uh, I thank you for the audience here. Uh, I think there will be, be recording for this. Uh, I will put it to YouTube. And uh, can you ask them for the questions if they have? Yeah, uh, I realized uh, about the discussion. You know, I, I want to say something uh, also about that, like uh, to 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 um, yeah. to assume something. You know, I think that uh, that situation that we have right now, it'd be like uh, from those days we can have new point of view about education and I hope that our uh, politi politician and uh, the, the people from the government, our headmasters, our friends from, uh, My brother, yeah. from I mean like, like edu, edu friends, um, all the teachers and even the society, I think that parents and, and, and kids have uh, have new point of view after after um, after after end of, of, of this problem that we have on all of the world. And after that, I think that uh, we can uh, sit in the um, near to the one table and discuss about new way of teaching. And I think that the new way of teaching will be much more, much more, much more better than uh, yeah. than the thing that we have uh, till today. Okay, yes. Fra Francisco. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I, I agree absolutely with uh, Lucas and. Uh, just uh, wrapping up everything in a few words in 10 seconds, you know, sometime many years ago, uh, I read a very good definition of education, which I have never forgotten. I read something like education is what remains when all that we learned at the school is forgotten. So our students will forget all mathematics, chemistry, English and language and everything. Okay. But they won't forget this experience. So we have to take profit of it to educate them. Delivering lessons is not so important these days. But offering activities, helping them to connect with within each other, to collaborate, to do things in common. What we are learning, thanks to despite this experience, is going to make them men and women in the future. And that's what we really need. We have to help them, to help our students to be secure, safe, and repeat continuously, stay home, stay safe, collaborate with your students, be with your parents. I think it is the best thing we can do. Forget lessons, forget exams, grades, etc. You know, because life is first. Perfect. Uh, how about Rasinchin? Uh, very well said by Francisco that just forget okay. the grades and exams and everything. The life is first and in this era, I think what why, what our students need to learn is that the compassion, the empathy for the others. We need to know we need to help each other in this situation. And I think that this is the best way how we can help each other, even though we are sitting on a different corners of the world. But still we are discussing, we are trying to find out the solution and helping each other that you are not alone. Spain is not alone. 
Italy is not alone. We all are with you. And this is a, uh, I think, Pekka, you have done the great job by, you know, collaborating by inviting all these educators and just try to find out what educators need to do in this era. I think I don't think you are you all are very expensive teachers. I'm very new in this in this field, but have you ever faced such a situation ever in the past? I think no. You haven't experienced that situation, whether you know classes or the classrooms or the schools or entire country being locked. So it's like uh, you you never imagine such a situation. So only human beings can tackle this situation, not the machine learning or the machines cannot tackle this type of situation. And being a human, you have to be very compassionate and have the empathy for the others. That's what the students or the leaders of 21st century needs to focus on. Yeah, I think uh, this was the perfect ending for this and uh, uh, for everyone and thank you